What's going on everybody? Doug Lane here, Fast Lane Car Care. Today we have this, uh, what is it, Elantra? <laughs> yeah, we got this Hyundai Elantra in here. Um, I'm gonna do the back window. I'm gonna show you two things. One, I'm gonna show you how to shrink and stick this thing, but also how you can make yourself more efficient um, and save yourself some money. So you can see we're overhanging just a little bit on the one side. The important thing is that we're even. Let's look up here, grab my light. I don't know if you'll be able to see it without it. Here's our dot matrix, and here's the edge of our film. So we've got maybe a half an inch extra, about the same on both sides. What we're gonna do is we've got all this slack down here at the bottom. Right here's our dot matrix here. So I'm gonna cut, that's a carbon blade, so we're not gonna cut anything with that. Um, I'm gonna cut right about here. That's gonna leave me a little bit of room uh, so I don't have to worry about burning the edges on the bottom of this shrink and make sure it's all the way through oh, got one little spot there had to wait on this car to thaw out a little bit but ta-da here we go now we have a windshield strip a second here I like to put towel down towels down if I want to stand on the door jams I've used ladders stools stuff like that in the past and it just it's never works out very well the most effective way I've found is to do exactly what I'm doing so this isn't where it's gonna stay I'm just kind of rough cutting you know just kind of roughly laying this out there so you can see we have plenty of material to make ourselves a nice strip. Now, normally I'm gonna to go to the, about the bottom of that dot matrix. Uh, just depends on where that is. The mirror bracket, something like that, you know what I mean? So we're gonna go down here. Um, we have plenty of room. We got about three inches up here, so that shouldn't be an issue. Now, proceed with the back window as normal. Um, I like to leave a little bit of overhang on them so that I can get the, the correct width for the windshield because sometimes you'll have a back window that's smaller than the actual windshield. It happens. So, same thing you guys have seen me do a hundred times before. I'm gonna kinda try to hustle a little bit because I don't have a whole lot of GoPro battery. And I mean, I have other batteries, but I just don't wanna stop in the middle of this and switch it and all that. So, <coughs> we're already behind. Um, because, as you can see, this, this car was completely covered in snow. I mean, there's still plenty of snow on the hood, or I mean on the roof, but this thing had snow on the, on the hood, on the windows, the ice on the, on the window sills, on the outside. So I had to sit here and let it warm up and scrape it with the ice scraper and let it warm and see some of these big chunks that come off the deck lid that I shoved underneath the car so I'm not walking around in it. I might just show you how to shrink it, I don't know. If we have enough battery, we'll do the install process, but mainly, I just wanna show you guys how you can be efficient. This is why I don't charge extra when you buy a full car, tent job or a full SUV. I don't charge extra, because most of the time, I can do exactly what I just did, and the windshield strip's gonna take me about 15, 20 minutes to install, but the big thing is the material's basically free because I use the overhang off these back windows. Now you can't do that on every car. There are some cars that they're gonna be too tall unless you're using a 40 inch roll. I use a 36 uh, and that doesn't happen very often to me. But then also what I do is sometimes you'll get people that don't wanna strip whether they're too tall, too short, just don't like the look of it, whatever it is, you can take that overhang off of a car like that, roll it up, put it in your film box, and so now, or if you know, you're in a shop, you can have a dedicated space to put them in, but so now what you can do, you've got extras, and let's say you get a customer that maybe they had to have their windshield replaced and you know they need to get a new strip, or you run across one of those cars that uh, 
you know, the back window is gonna be too big to do that trick I just showed you. You just go reach in your box of scraps, and voila, you got it. I really like using them for the case that I just mentioned where a customer, you know, has a windshield that needs replaced or whatever, because then you don't have to, it just feels better when you're not rolling 48, 50, 60 inches for a film off your 20 inch roll to do a strip. You just use your scraps. Helps keep you more profitable. Now we're well past our matrix over there in the middle. So we just gotta worry about this little corner here cause it's a little bit tight, but we got it. We're gonna come back across here real quick. Push that out. Push that out. I'm not a huge fan of wet checking most of the time. So I'd normally just shrink it. Make sure it's good. I might lift the edges and shrink it a second time. But unless I have to cut around a wiper arm, like on an SUV or a hatchback, I normally don't even, don't bother wet checking. See, like right here, this spot's not wanting to come down. It's past the matrix, but. Then I want to see if this is a hair right here. Right there, which doesn't look like it was. So this little air pocket. You can see that right there's a hair.
Something to note when you get down here to the bottom, you don't want to hang out with your heat too much here because you can melt this seal here if you're not careful. You can also melt your bottom edge and that's not good either. So. Boom, there we go. Shrink. Let's see if we can cut it. And now we're blind. So, that's fun. These cars are not super fun to do. They're a little bit tight. You can fold the back seats down pretty easy. But man, it seems like whenever I do that, You obviously have to sit on the seat, and uh, it's not fun. Even, like, I'm pretty short on my head sitting there, you know, bouncing off the headliner while I'm trying to get the film in there. My big towel's at home still talked about on the video that you should see before this one took it home to wash it and didn't bring it back to work I hate when that happens I didn't even pay attention to how much of a border we have in here uh, we got about a mile on the side and about a mile on the top, so <coughs> easy peasy. No need to be super precise. Some people cut out the brake light. I don't. Unless it's requested. Which I think I maybe had one person in all the years request it. Oh, I take that back. One time on an older car, I cut around the brake light because it was actually like touching the glass, and I couldn't get, I couldn't get the bulldozer back in there. Like it wouldn't even go, even without window tint, it wouldn't go in there. So I said, "Hey, man, that's why I've cut around the glass or the brake light." That was the only time that somebody's, that I've done that without somebody like actually asking for it. I see a lot of it and I think that I think it's like something people do to cheat because it's less shrinking that you have to do. But for me, it makes it a pain to install because it seems like it's uh It seems like it loses its strength and rigidity, so like it makes it way more difficult to get the film wrestled in there. Because when you cut this middle section out, like the two sides just want to do one, like its own thing. I don't know, I've only tried it a few times. Like, you know what I mean? Like I've had to do it obviously, like I just said once or twice, but I also tried to do it a couple times and I felt like it was not nearly as easy to do. So I mean, I guess if you're just learning, you could put your fingers there and then in that way if you crease them, you can cut them out, but I feel like once you have some cars under your belt, you shouldn't need to. You shouldn't need to do that so you can just shrink it. Shrink it as is. So that's cut. Oh. Ah. I mentioned on one of the other videos, I hate taking out the trash. So that's why it's like almost ever flowing. Check it out, man. It's uh, that's actually two inches of snow on top of ice. It's we had freezing rain and then we got snow and then we got um, 
Then we got some more snow, but like that, the first snow we got was wet. It was like a wet, heavy snow. So it basically just turned into ice. So even after you get past all that snow, there's uh, like probably that much just sheet, just solid sheet of ice. So I'll probably have to take it out today. It's, it's getting too much. Actually, no, I won't because it's supposed to warm up in the next couple days. We'll see if it warms up all the way or what it does. If it all thaws out. I don't even know if the trash people have been here. I haven't been over there to look. The dumpster's on the far side of the parking lot. I don't venture over there unless I'm obviously taking out the trash. I use steel wool on the back glass. These are steel wool pads, so I've heard some people say that steel wool will scratch the glass. Uh, these steel wool pads won't. I don't know if it's, you know, triple or quadruple zero or double zero. I don't know what grade it is, but I have done this. I've cleaned every window, basically this way for years. And I've never had a single issue. What is that noise? Weird. So. Some people also say you get these little steel wool fibers when you use steel wool. Again, I don't have that issue. Uh, and I think it's because I prep. Let's see. Mist. I prep it a little bit differently than most. So, we're going to try to use this to get behind the brake light. See if we can't put a little, put a little soapy slip solution on there. There's also a little bit of residual uh, squeaky monkey. There we go. You can buy a special tool that does this. You can Velcro a pad on there, but... The reason I'm not gonna use steel wool on this one is because uh, generally the steel wool is too thick. It'll get stuck in there and then you'll have to like peel it apart. And then the same thing, uh, you know, then you will get like steel wool down there stuck. You gotta make sure you get it flushed out. So that's the way we're gonna do that. Bring in our towel. Start at the top. Uh oh, work my way down. So now, obviously, we've not got everything. Now I'm going to take my towel, I'm going to flip it around to the clean side. And do one of these numbers. Hear it squeaking? That's how you know she's clean. Pull that out. Let's get this other side here. Oh, sorry guys. All right. wipe down my trim for two reasons. I want to catch any drips, but I also want to wipe off any dust that might get on there. Now this, you guys are probably like, that towel doesn't even cover. You know, yeah, it doesn't cover very much, um, but this doesn't have any electronics in it. You know, there's no speakers on the deck lid or anything like that, so it is what it is. It's at least gonna catch the majority of dirt and crap. Okay, so now 
push that to the side. Now, we can use our bulldozer. So I'm letting that moisture settle so any dust in the air will come down and cling to the uh, release liner. should have got a uh, longer hose for my keg. What I want to do is get one of those like Rubbermaid carts and then I'll put that on the bottom and run like a, I don't know, maybe like a 10 foot hose. And so that way, you know, I can just carry it, not carry it, I can push it around. And then that way I'll always have I'll always have enough hose. I won't have to worry about walking around the car. I won't have to worry about moving the keg. Because the problem is, even though I think this is 25 feet, um, you're doing some of those long trucks, you can't get all the way around it. So you've got to put it in the middle, like in the front. But then you still have to, like I said, walk around with the hose to get to the other side and spray it down. And then I want like something like that, but maybe like a like a mechanic service cart, something like that, but with less drawers. And that way I could put squeegees in it. I could have my couple squeegees on the top or something. And, uh, my common tools for pulling door panels, little quarter inch socket set and stuff. But we'll see. We've actually only been in this place not even a month yet. Not even 30 days. So before I worked out of my home garage and it was considerably smaller than this. So it wasn't really a big deal. Because you didn't have very far to walk no matter what. But, you guys can probably figure out, the more you have to walk around, the less efficient you are. So all I'm trying to do here, Get my bottom down there. Get pushed. Come on now. Now I can get my top up here. We know we're gonna need to come that way. There we go. Oh, where are we at? We got our bottom too far down on that side. So let's see. Boom. Boom. Everything should be covered right there. Fusion hybrid for the win. Oh, man, I love this squeegee. Every like the more I use it, the more I love it. Like there are some squeegees that you know you can only push with. This you can push, you can pull. It still gets a lot of moisture out regardless of which way you use it. And then of course, like I'm not even pushing very hard, but it's still doing a f fantastic job.
bought the red line extractor as well. I think it has its place in the tent industry for sure, but it's definitely ooh, not a tool. I don't, I don't think that I will use it very often. Uh, it gets a lot of water out, but it's very hard. So it doesn't, it doesn't contour very well. That's on the outside, sweet. It doesn't contour very well to what you're doing, you know, your glass. So it's not very good on, you know, most, um, what do you want to call them? Like truck windows? Or not truck windows. It's not very good on car windows. It works on truck windows because they're generally flat. Now we're doing a hard pass. Putting some pressure on it. <coughs> Excuse me. <sighs> Probably wondering why I'm not doing really anything to the bottom. Pretty simple. That's what the bulldozer is for. It. Now I'm using the Fusion Shorty 5 handle with the uh, hybrid. I did because they were out of stock. Uh, when I got my extractor, I went ahead and bought the long handle. And uh, it's not a bad little handle. Not a bad little handle at all. I thought maybe being a long, it would kind of like get on my nerves, but it's really... Not bad. So I found that you just go over these a couple times with about 50% overlap. And see, I'm pushing this down and then I'm releasing pressure. If you push down and you're and you're still pushing into the glass, when you go to pull this back out, you're you're doing one of these, you can snag your film and pull it back up. If you're lucky, it'll just lay right back down. If you're unlucky, it will uh, it will pull a bunch of junk, contamination, trash in it, and that sucks. So wipe down our top edge here. Wipe down our drips. Now we're just gonna really quickly wipe off our uh, film in here. I'm not trying to like super clean it or anything that's on the outside now normally I would wait to do this until last because it's gonna get more overspray and stuff on it when I do the side windows and whatnot so it's gonna have to get cleaned again but for the sake of the video I'm gonna get that dryer sheet off of there so you guys can see. Excuse me. There's no uh, no bubbles. No nothing. Anything you see is on the outside of the glass, like that some kind of something in the glass but it's on the outside so there you guys go there's how you do the back window on your Hyundai Elantra uh, what year is this thing 16 2016 model but there you guys go back window looking good didn't take very long now because of the way we use our film We've got the strip. Now all we have to do is cut out our, our four doors. We'll use the scraps off of that to do our quarter window 